Daniel chapter 4. King Nebuchadnezzar to everyone, everywhere, every race, color, and creed. Peace and prosperity to all. It is my privilege to report to you the gracious miracles that the high God has done for me. His miracles are staggering. His wonders are surprising. His kingdom lasts and lasts. His sovereign rule goes on forever. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at home taking it easy in my palace without a care in the world. But as I was stretched out on my bed, I had a dream that scared me, a nightmare that shook me. I sent for all the wise men of Babylon so that they could interpret the dream for me. When they were all assembled, magicians, enchanters, fortune tellers, witches, I told them the dream. None could tell me what it meant. And then Daniel came in. His Babylonian name is Belteshazzar, named after my God, a man full of divine Holy Spirit. I told him my dream. Belteshazzar, I said. Chief of the magicians, I know that you are a man full of the divine Holy Spirit, and there is no mystery that you can't solve. Listen to this dream that I had and interpret it for me. This is what I saw as I was stretched out on my bed. I saw a big towering tree at the center of the world. As I watched, the tree grew huge and strong. Its top reached the sky, and it could be seen from the four corners of the earth. It leaves were its leaves were beautiful its fruit abundant enough food for everyone wild animals found shelter under it birds nested in its branches everything living was fed and sheltered by it and this also is what i saw as i was stretched out on my bed i saw a holy watchman descend from heaven and call out chop down the tree lop off its branches strip its leaves and scatter its fruit chase the animals from beneath it and shoo the birds from its branches but leave the stump and roots in the ground belted with a strap of iron and bronze in the grassy meadow let him be soaked in heaven's dew, and take his meals with the animals that graze. Let him lose his mind and get an animal's mind in exchange, and let this go on for seven seasons. The angels announce this decree. decree. The holy watchmen bring the sentence, so that every living will know that the high God rules human kingdoms. He arranges kingdoms affairs however he wishes and makes leaders out of losers. This is what I, King Nebuchadnezzar, dreamed. It's your turn, Belteshazzar. Interpret it for me. None of the wise men of Babylon could make heads or tails of it, but I'm sure you can do it. You're full of the divine Holy Spirit. At first, Daniel, who had been renamed Belteshazzar in Babylon, was upset. The thoughts that came swarming into his mind terrified him. Belteshazzar, the king said, stay calm. Don't let the dream and its interpretation scare you. My master, said Belteshazzar, I wish this dream were about your enemies and its interpretation for your foes. The tree you saw that grew so large and sturdy with its top touching the sky, visible from the four corners of the world, the tree with the luxuriant foliage and abundant fruit, enough for everyone, the tree under which animals took cover and in which birds built, built nests, you, O king, are that tree. You have grown great and strong. Your royal majesty reaches sky high and your sovereign rule stretches to the four corners of the world. But the part about the holy angel descending from heaven and proclaiming, chop down the trees, destroy it, but leave stump and roots in the ground belted with a strap of iron and bronze in the grassy meadow. Let him be soaked with heaven's dew and take his meals with the grazing animals for seven seasons. This... O king also refers to you. It means that the high God has sentenced my master, the king. You will be driven away from human company and live with the wild animals. You will graze on grass like an ox. You will be soaked in heaven's dew. This will go on for seven seasons and you will learn that the high God rules over human kingdoms and that he arranges all kingdom affairs. That part about the tree stump and roots being left means that your kingdom will still be there for you after you learn that it is heaven that runs things. So king, take my advice. 
Make a clean break with your sins and start living for others. Quit your wicked life and look after the needs of the down and out. Then you will continue to have a good life. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Just 12 months later, he was walking on the balcony of the royal palace in Babylon and boasted, Look at this, Babylon the Great, and I built it all by myself, a royal palace adequate to display my honor and glory. The words were no sooner out of his mouth than a voice out of heaven spoke, this is the verdict on you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your kingdom is taken away, is taken from you. You will be driven out of human company and live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like an ox. The sentence is for seven seasons. Enough time to learn that the high God rules human kingdoms and puts whomever he wishes in charge. It happened at once. Nebuchadnezzar was driven out of human company, ate grass like an ox, and was soaked in heaven's dew. His hair grew like the feathers of an eagle, and his nails like the claws of a hawk. At the end of the seven years, I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked to heaven. I was given my mind back, and I blessed the high God, thanking and glorifying God who lives forever. His sovereign rule lasts and lasts. His kingdom never declines and falls. Life on this earth doesn't add up to much, but God's heavenly army keeps everything going. No one can interpret his work. No one can call his rule into question. At the same time that I had was given back my mind, I was also given back my majesty and splendor, making my kingdom shine. All the leaders and important people came looking for me. I was reestablished as king in my kingdom and became greater than ever. And that's why I'm set singing. I, Nebuchadnezzar, singing and praising the king of heaven. Everything he does is right and he does it the right way. He knows how to turn a proud person into a humble man or woman. Daniel chapter 5. King Belshazzar held a great feast for his 1,000 nobles. The wine flowed freely. Belshazzar, heady with the wine, ordered that the gold and silver chalices his father Nebuchadnezzar had stolen from God's temple of Jerusalem be brought in so that he and his nobles, his wives and concubines, could drink from them. When the gold and silver chalices were brought in, the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines, drank wine from them. They drank the wine and drunkly praised their gods, made of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. At that very moment, the fingers of a a human hand appeared and began writing on the lamp illum illumined whitewashed wall of the palace when the king saw the disembodied hand writing away he went white as a ghost scared out of his wits his legs went limb and his knees knocked he yelled out for the enchanters the fortune tellers and the diviners to come he told these Babylonian Magi, Anyone who can read this writing on the wall and tell me what it means will be famous and rich, purple robe, the great gold chain, and be third in command in the kingdom. One after the other, they tried, but could make no sense of it. They could neither read what was written nor interpret it to the king. So now the king was really frightened. All the blood drained from his face. The nobles were in a panic. The queen heard of the hysteria among the king and his nobles and came to the banquet hall. She said, long live the king. Don't be upset. Don't sit around looking like ghosts. There's a man in your kingdom who is full of the divine Holy Spirit. During your father's time, he was well known for his intellectual brilliance and spiritual wisdom. He was so good that your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him the head of all the magicians, enchanters, fortune tellers, and diviners. There was no one quite like him. He could do anything. Interpret dreams, solve mysteries, explain puzzles. His name is Daniel, but he was renamed Belteshazzar by the king. Have Daniel called in. He'll tell you what is going on here. So Daniel was called in. 
The king asked him, Are you the Daniel who was one of the Jewish exiles my father brought here from Judah? I've heard about you, that you're full of the Holy Spirit, that you've got a brilliant mind, that you are incredibly wise. The wise men and enchanters were brought in here to read this writing on the wall and interpret it for me. They couldn't figure it out. Not a word, not a syllable. But I've heard that you interpret dreams and solve mysteries. So if you can read the writing and interpret it for me, you'll be rich and famous. A purple robe, the great gold chain around your neck, and third in command in the kingdom. Daniel answered the king, You can keep your gifts or give them to someone else. But I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. Listen, O king. <coughs> the high god gave your father Nebuchadnezzar a great kingdom and a glorious reputation because God made him so famous people from everywhere whatever their race color and creed were totally intimidated by him he killed or spared people on whim he promoted or humiliated people capriciously he developed a big head and a hard spirit then God knocked him off his high horse and stripped him off his fame of his fame he was thrown out of human company lost his mind and lived like a wild animal he ate grass like an ox and was soaked by heaven's dew until the, he learned his lesson that the high god rules human kingdoms and puts anyone he wants in charge you are his son and you have known all this yet you're as arrogant as he whatever was look at you setting yourself up in competition against the master of heaven you have the sacred chalices from his king his temple brought into your drunken party so that you and your nobles your wives and your concubines could drink from them you use the sacred chalices chalices to toast your gods of silver and gold bronze and iron wood and stone blind deaf and imbecile gods but you treat with contempt the living God who holds your entire life from birth to death in his hand. God sent the hand that wrote on the wall, and this is what is written. Mean, Tekel, and Peres. This is what the word mean. The words mean. Mean means God has numbered the days of your rule and they don't add up. Tekel means you have been weighed on the scales and you don't weigh much perez means your kingdom has been divided up and handed over to the medes and persians belshazzar did what he had promised he robed daniel in purple draped the great gold chain around his neck and promoted him to the third to third in charge in the kingdom. That same night, the Babylonian king Belshazzar was murdered. Darius the Mede, or Mede, was 62 years old when he succeeded him as king. Daniel chapter six. Darius reorganized his kingdom. He appointed 120 governors to administer all the parts of his realm. Over them were three vice regents, one of whom was Daniel. The governors reported to the vice regents who made sure that everything was in order for the king. But Daniel, brimming with spirit and intelligence, so completely outclassed the other vice regents and governors that the king decided to put him in charge of the whole kingdom. The vice regents and governors got together to find some old scandal or skeleton in Daniel's life that they could use against him, but they couldn't dig up anything. He was totally exemplary and trustworthy. They could find no evidence of negligence or misconduct. So they finally gave up and said, we're never going to find anything against this Daniel unless he can scheme, we can scheme up something religious. The vice regents and governors conspired together and then went to the king and said, King Darius, live forever. We've convened your vice regents, governors, and all your leading officials and have agreed that the king should issue the following decree for the next 30 days no one is to pray to any god or mortal except you O king anyone who disobeys will be thrown into the lion's den issue this decree O king and make it unconditional as if written in stone like all the laws of the medes and persians king darius signed the decree when Daniel learned that the decree had been signed and posted, he continued to pray just as he had always done. 
his house and had windows in the upstairs that opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he knelt there in prayer, thanking and praising his God. The conspirators came and found him praying, asking God for help. They went straight to the king and reminded him of the royal decree that he had signed. Did you not, they said, sign a decree forbidding anyone to pray to any God or man except for you for the next 30 days? And anyone caught doing it would be thrown into the lion's den? Absolutely, said the king, written in stone like all the laws of the Medes and Persians. Then they said, Daniel, one of the Jewish exiles ignores you, O king, and defies your decree three times a day he prays. At this, the king was very upset and tried his best to get Daniel out of the fix he'd put him in. He worked at it the whole day long, but then the conspirators were back. Remember, O king, it's the law of the Medes and Persians that the king's decree can never be changed. The king caved in and ordered Daniel brought and thrown into the lion's den. But he said to Daniel, your God, to whom you are so loyal, is going to get you out of this. A stone slab was placed over the opening of the den. The king sealed the cover with his signet ring or signet ring and the signet rings of all his nobles, fixing Daniel's fate. The king then went back to his palace. He refused supper. He couldn't sleep. He spent the night fasting. At daybreak, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. As he approached the den, he called out anxiously, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve so loyally, saved you from the lions? Oh, king, live forever, said Daniel. My God sent his angel who closed the mouths of the lions so that they would not hurt me. I've been found innocent before God and also before you. Oh, king, I've done nothing to harm you. When the king heard these words, he was happy. He ordered Daniel taken out of the den. When he was hauled up, there wasn't a scratch on him. He had trusted his God. Then the king commanded that the conspirators who had informed on Daniel be thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. Before they hit the floor, the lions had them in their jaws, tearing them to pieces. King Darius published this proclamation to every race, color, and creed on earth. Peace to you, abundant peace. I decree that Daniel's God shall be worshipped and feared in all parts of my kingdom. He is the living God, world without end. His kingdom never falls. His rule continues eternally. He is a savior and rescuer. He performs astonishing miracles in heaven and on earth. He saved Daniel from the power of the lions. From then on, Daniel was treated well during the reign of Darius. And also in the following reign of Cyrus the Persian. Amen. Amen.